Are you my mommy? Good morning friends, my name is Brandon Date and I am your humble narrator. Welcome back to Project Zomboid. We have almost accomplished our rescue mission. We didn't pass out in the woods or anything. I'm so proud of us. I had to make a trip back to this farm. This here farm had a bunch of stuffed animals. They wanted to have a tea party in the woods, but guess what? It's probably not going to be in the woods. Unless it's the woods near my, uh, my fishing cabin. Yeah, then we could be friends forever. I have a little, uh, campfire set up out there. Hopefully they're not going to catch on fire and burn and die. <laughs> but, uh, even if that happens, you know, that's life sometimes. Sim teams. We've got a long, long road ahead of us today. I think, uh, some creepypasta is in order. Because one, I like creepypasta. Two, I hope you like creepypasta. Three, creepypasta's delicious. Four, I'm going to count up to five because that's a better number than four. And five, I love uh, spooky stories about zombies. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. If you uh, haven't inferred that quite yet, well, I mean, come on. <laughs> come on, bro. I keep reading spooky stories about zombies. It's pretty, pretty uh, obvious, isn't it? I hope. Is it raining again? Fuck, it's rainy season in Project Zomboid too. Alright, put on the poncho. We're gonna be fine. We gotta stop moving. You can't put your fucking shirt on while you're moving? Oh, little Dayton. You're so uncoordinated. You can't put on... <laughs> you can't shoot gum and walk. Put on gum and walk. <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes when I'm walking, I put gum on my shoes. Actually, somebody else puts gum on my shoes. I haven't had that happen in the Philippines yet, though. They... It's either because A, they don't spit their gum on the sidewalk, or B, um, most of the fucking gum that's uh, spit on the ground is, like, wrapped up in dirt immediately, so it doesn't stick to my shoes. And it would be even worse in, in the Philippines, because I wear sandals, like, 90% of the time, because otherwise your feet sweat. And that's just disgusting. Oh my god. It's raining even harder now. In game. It keeps raining outside too. But I, uh, I can't find a break in the rain. I'm not gonna keep pausing. It, uh, really chaps my ass. <laughs> so I'm just, uh, kind of trying to sound remove it. And it makes the sound a little bit weird. So for that I do apologize. But, uh, we, got, we gotta keep this YouTube thing going, man. I don't want to lose my motivation for it. And, uh, yeah, there might come a certain point where I'm like, well, I haven't done it for this long. I guess we're done. I guess that's it. And then, uh, you'll never see the Dayton Does again. Unless you visit me on Twitter or whatever. I really want to keep YouTube. 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 Where does this shit go again? I think I'm headed back the way that I came, correct? Maybe? God damn. I'm so lost. It's because I didn't have my compass out. You better have your compass out. Open this shit up. We're going south. What direction was I going before? I can't quite remember. God. I'm so wet. I don't want to lose sight of the road, or I'm going to be in big trouble. I think the road does turn, but, uh, yeah. I can't recall for sure. I'm getting dementia. Fuck. This is just crazy. Ugh. Let's read a, a crazy creepypasta. Honestly, this is probably one of the best creepypastas that I've read in quite a long time. It's called Fresh Faces. It is written by a fellow who only goes by the name Master Kenobi, so big ups to him. Uh, and it goes as such, fresh faces, fresh faces, fresh, fresh, god damn it, fresh faces. Hi, I'm Seth. I'm writing this note, bottling it, and tossing it into the brook by my house. Writing helps me keep my sanity. Hopefully somebody who still reads will come pick it up and help me. It started a month ago. I was down in my basement office on my computer watching old Mystery Science Theater 3000 reruns. 
The phone rang next to me, but I didn't pay any attention to it. It was never for me. On the off occasion that it was, it was usually my brother, and half the time we were on the phone, my nephew would be trying to grab it and talk to me himself. Mom yelled down the stairs that the phone was for me. Yeah, I still lived at home with my folks. Sue me. Anyway, I picked up. Hello, I said, paying more attention to the antics of the robots on the screen. It's begun. The voice was a little more than a whimper. A plea. I didn't even recognize the voice. Excuse me? I asked, wondering who on earth was calling. They've come. I don't have much time, Jeff. You told me to call if what we did caused any trouble. Now a little worried, I said, I think you've got the wrong number. This is Seth, not Jeff. Don't go outdoors, the person shrieked. Completely freaked out, I disconnected the call. Must have been some prank caller, but I wasn't amused. Rattled, I put the matter behind me. Much later, I finished watching videos and shut off the lights to head upstairs. It was pitch black, but I knew the way. The dark seemed a little more oppressive this time, though. I shrugged off the feeling and went upstairs. As I passed through the living room, I chanced to look out the window. There were people outside, on a walk or something. I checked my watch and it was 3 a.m. That's weird, I muttered. I stumbled upstairs to my room and drifted off to sleep. I was a fool that first night. If I'd recognized what I'd seen, I would have saved myself the terror and just stepped outside. The next morning, the news was on. Odd, since my dad usually turned on the sports channel before he went off to work. I didn't even glance at it as I threw on my tie and stumbled into the bathroom. An uneasy feeling crept into my gut as I did my morning routine. I usually had to fight for bathroom space, but today there wasn't a sound. I peeked out of the room and saw that the front door was open, but the glass storm door wasn't. There wasn't a sound. Looking outdoors, I saw those same people that I've seen the night before, and I opened the door. Immediately their heads snapped towards me. I recoiled and leapt inside as quickly as I could, felt something catch at my ankle as I did so. Their faces were fixed in expressionless gazes their mouths slightly agape and dripping with blood. I looked down and saw one right next to the porch, withdrawing its arm. It had tried to grab me. With a dizzying feeling of horror, I recognized my little brother. Slamming the door, I locked it tight and stumbled back into the living room. The television was reporting that the disease was spreading south from Canada across the US. I shut it off and pointlessly called out to see if anyone else was in the house. No answer. So began my solitary existence. The news ran for a few days before they were caught. Kept making the stupidest mistake, going home every night. The electricity stayed running, so I guess someone left the switch on at the factory, or maybe it's just northern New England that's been overrun. I'm really not sure. The internet's been out too, so that's pretty annoying. While the news was running, they called them zombies, going back to that old standby. I guess it works, I mean... They don't do a whole lot, and they're definitely dead. They walk around until their legs rot out from under them, and then they crawl until they literally fall to pieces. Well, they've got legs, though. They're fast. That's how they jump my family, I suppose. And the police car that drove up to the house to see if there were any survivors, too. That wasn't a fun thing to look to every morning. They overturned my car while chasing him, so I'm stuck. Cops to the rescue again. They didn't really need food, so they didn't finish eating the poor guy, but they dismembered him pretty good. That's why he couldn't get up and join him. I could see him gnashing his teeth fruitlessly, though. For about a week, a guy on the radio hopefully pointed out that they were falling to pieces, so all we needed to do was wait him out. Then he got impatient, went outdoors. Nobody's been on the radio for two weeks. I'm in trouble, though. You see, the house has no food left. I can't wait for them all to fall down dead all over again. I made a couple of expeditions to the general store. Luckily, I had my sword collection upstairs. They're all too slow to catch me while I run, but there are so many that sometimes I panic. Last time, they nearly got me. I broke the front door getting back in, and now the cold seeps in every night. I can see one standing out on the porch right now, not even ten feet from where I'm writing this. But you're safe indoors. Don't ask me why they abhor coming inside. Whatever the reason, it's been my lifeline. Unfortunately, they seem to know that there's someone in, in, alive inside the house. Don't ask me how. This fellow on the front step doesn't even have eyes anymore. Maybe they can hear a heartbeat, or smell sweat, or blood. I spent a couple of days naming them. Some of the faces I recognized and gave their old names to them. 
Same old gang's been hanging around here for the last few weeks, slowly dropping in number as they fall to pieces. They've never wandered off, though. There are 79 who were once men and 63 who were once women out there. Once, just to see what would happen, I shot one in the head with our shotgun. You know, to see if the old shoot-a-hump zombie in the head and they die for good adage had any truth. So, I've actually got 79 who were once men, 62 who were once women, and one who was once a woman and decided to keep standing even after about losing 80% of her head. And I'm down one shotgun shell. So they wait. And I'm losing it. I talk to myself constantly. I ate a stuffed animal last night. The cotton went down hard, but it felt good to have something in my stomach again. There are no fruit trees around, and anyways, it's November. Water's been getting scarcer. The tap water stopped working eight days ago. Luckily, I'd already filled up the bathtub and every bottle I could find before it stopped. Oh, great. Now the lamp's getting brighter and I hear a buzzing sound. I wonder if the power's going... Well, that wasn't fun. Total loss of power for four days. You ever try sleeping in the dark knowing that there are things just outside that'll kill you and make you one of them at the first chance they get? Probably since these things are everywhere as far as I can tell. Quick update, I mentioned Herschel, that guy on my porch. One of his legs fell off, so he's sitting down and sniffing at it. Thank God they lose all higher brain functions. I'm pretty sure the soul isn't held captive in these things. And that this is a disease or whatever that's trying to spread itself as far as it can in the population. I don't know if you've noticed this, reader, but the animals just don't seem affected. It's a small comfort. Of course, they die if they eat the flesh, but they don't get back up once they die. That's weird, huh? I'm getting hungry and desperate. Maybe, just maybe, I can load up the old 22 and bag a squirrel from inside. But how can I even go get it? On one hand, I'm a bit more optimistic that you're out there now, whoever you are. The power couldn't have come back if there weren't other people working to restore the order. I'm feeling lucky, so it's time to grab a sword and go drop this in the brook. Maybe this whole thing's almost over. Maybe, on the other hand, if it is almost over, why are there fresh faces outside today? Dun dun dun! I really like that creepy pasta. Pretty well written, and uh, good job to Master Kenobi for regaling us with it. Woohoo! Well, it seems that I uh, went in a big circle, but you know, it don't seem so long, especially when you got uh, a song and a story in your heart that needs to be shared with the world. So it seems like, uh, honestly, that trip was a lot shorter coming back than it was getting there. I guess because getting there I was, uh, rather freaked out about whether I would actually make it to the farm or not before, uh, night descended. Well, I mean, yeah. We would have made it back, no matter what. Unless I passed out. But, um, I don't want to go to sleep at midnight and fuck up my whole sleep rotation schedule kind of thing. That ain't no good. I also don't want to, uh, get in fights with zombies right now. Let's see if I can just, like, lure this fella away from the window. I don't... Yeah, I don't want to see it get broken or anything like that. Hey, buddy. What's in there? Interesting. Huh? Boom. Yeah, I don't even knock her back at all. So this is, uh... This is not a fight that I'm gonna win. I'll go ahead and let it break that window. Everything's gonna be fine. We'll find somewhere to, to settle. My excessive exertion. We are uh, heading back into the fucking... Into the shit. <laughs> I said we were gonna go home in this episode. I just wanna go home. Oh, God. Ah. Uh. Well. <clears throat> it is what it is. We're going to make do with what we got, all right? And I do have a little bit more space in my bags anyway, so maybe it's not not a complete uh, screw-up. I don't know how I got down this way. I guess I exited the farm on the wrong side. I just kept going to the road instead of uh, instead of bailing out the, the direction that I came in originally, right? Is that correct? Something like that? I don't really know. Oh, but everything's fine. Now we're uh, somewhere interesting. Is this a warehouse? No. 
I mean, yes, but it's the McCoy Logging Warehouse thing. Have we been here before? I don't know. Can't recall. Oh yeah, that all looks familiar. Doesn't it? It's kind of laid out a little bit differently. Isn't it? What is anything anymore? Oh god! Metal bar, nails, a piece of tape, nails, welding rods, metal sheets. Think I need any of this. Not thusly. Hmm. Getting a little hungry. Let me just check the bathrooms first. Or some adhesive bandages. Which I'm uh, sure to run out of at some point. There we go. I've got 11 of them. I brought 10 of them with me, so we're, we're doing good. I guess. It's acceptable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know there's not going to be much food. I could eat some chewing gum. That would be nice, huh? Wouldn't that be a treat? Such a treat! Why are you, why are you focusing on the S so much? Because I like that. It's so good. <laughs> I don't even understand what's happening in my brain anymore. Oh, I want to eat the dog biscuit. Have you ever eaten a dog biscuit? This shit tastes normal as hell. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with that. Oh, uh, box of nails. Yeah, pair these up. Ooh, excellent. Wonderful. Yeah, I remember, uh... My mom had some some dog biscuits, and they they said popcorn on them. But I guess as a, a fucking twelve or thirteen year old, I didn't realize popcorn was for dogs. So I ate one of them. And she's like, "Do you like it?" And I said, "Yeah, it's pretty okay." And then uh, I ate probably four more before she's like, "You know, these are for dogs." And I was like, "What the fuck?" She's like, "Yeah, look." It says liver flavor on it. <sighs> I was so mad. Oh my god. How could you not tell me earlier that these were made for dogs? And you know, I didn't cry or nothing because, you know, I'm 13 years old. I'm a fucking man already, right? But, uh, I was pretty hurt. <laughs> I was pretty hurt that I couldn't trust my mother for something like that. Yeah, we definitely haven't been in this place before. You hear that? You hear that bitch breaking down the door over there? Damn, she is freaking out. Da, 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 Let me out! Let me out! It's like uh, what's that fucking movie? Evil Dead. Evil Dead, the old one, not the new one. Although they're basically uh, basically the same movie, kinda. I like the old one a little bit better. Not just because it's old, but because the story is, uh, told better, and it's not all edgy and whatnot. But, you know, most movies tend to be these days. Like, let's put a little edge in it. The kids aren't gonna like it if it's not edgy. Why are you saying edgy like that? I don't know. Every time I go in these boxes, it just seems like my, uh, my speech pattern's all fucked up. <laughs> we should leave this place before we get... Possessed by an evil spirit! Oh, I think this is the building we stayed in before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know! I'm lost! Are you my mommy? Knife, potato seeds, I don't need any of this. But if I see somebody over here, I'm gonna beat the shit out of them. It's good the shit out of them. Yeah, there is a lot to go through over here. That's one thing I love about Project Zomboid. One of many things that I love about Project Zomboid is just how vast everything is. Like, do you want to spend a day searching through all those boxes? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not suggestible. Ooh, can I get in over there? I know there's a door right there, but I want to slip in this way. Hell yeah. Look at this right here! And then I gotta move all these logs before I can get back there. See what's in the, uh... What's in the crates? What's in the crate? Damn. Bug net, paint, binoculars. 
I don't think any of this stuff would be at a logging corporation. I think it would be mostly planks. <laughs> Probably. Oh, now I'm getting a little sweepy. A little sweepy. What a sweepy boy I am. Oh, whatever. It's been a, a great time, McCoy Logging Corp. Thank you so much for having me. I'll be on my way now. Onward and upwards to bigger and better things. Still got a, a sack full of stuffed animals. In case anybody was wondering, I'm trying to find a good place for them to uh to sit around. Look at toy monkey, hippo, octopus. Octopus is my favorite. Like I said in the last episode, he has so many arms. He can give you hug. So and so, and so and so and so, and so and so and so. Is that eight so's? I'm not sure. I wasn't counting. Oh god. I think I'm going the wrong way now. Should be going, uh... Was that south? No, east. Should be going east in order to get into the town. Because uh, I'm not going to make it back to my house. I know I said we would, but guess what? It's not going to fucking happen. It's way too far away. It's already six o'clock. We're gonna have to find a place to settle. Settle down. Get some sweepies. You see? So drowsy. I could do with a lie down. Yeah, hey, man. Go ahead, lie it on down. We've got two toy triceratopses. So let's play with one of them. Only one of them. Only my favorite one. You can't play with it while you're moving? I can play with it while I'm moving. Me, me, me. Masturbation joke. <laughs> but it is hard. It is, well, I guess it's not hard. But it is difficult. <laughs> it's not hard because it's difficult. You ever try that shit? I haven't tried it, but I just imagine that it's, uh, it's not gonna be an easy thing. How are you gonna walk around and, and keep it going? You need to have, like, your head in the right space. You know what I mean? Not your head. Never mind. This is going terribly. <laughs> I don't know what anything is anymore. Hmm, where's the fucking town? Hmm. Let's see. I'm the map. 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 Well, I don't really know where I am at the moment. It's like a little highway and then some trees. So. Basically what I thought, as soon as I see a turn off towards the uh, bottom of the screen, I'll go that way. I could also try and bust myself through these fucking trees, but I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, I'm sure it will, because the, the road does continue parallel all the way, but I also don't want to get bit by a zombie! <laughs> see that shit? They're coming after me. Why are there so many zombies here? It's got to be close to where the uh, alarm went off or something like that. Because they are fucking wigging out. Hey, there's something. There's a little something. Oh, it's a snack stand. You want to snack on some matches or some rubber cement? <laughs> no. I, I, I don't think that sounds good to me. Here's an open space so I can dip across. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge! Hooray! This is the, uh... I guess it's a hotel or something? No, this is the gas station. And then there's like a gated community down this way. Hmm. I must choose the house wisely. Really, I just need to uh, rest up for a minute. And then I can go bust some fucking zombies in the head. Oh, don't rest there. Close these curtains. Close all the curtains. Keep yourself nice and safe. Here you go, little Dayton. Now have a rest. You deserve the rest, but don't go to sleep. You're not allowed to go to sleep yet, okay? Oh god. Holy shit. You out here? Fuck. Okay. 
Where you at? Where you at? Boost Mobile. God damn, I guess the advertising really works. Got inside my head. Infested my soul. Please let your soul glow. Okay. I guess that was the chick that was banging on the door. Ooh, kind of uh, freaked me out just a little bit. Freak me, daddy! <laughs> There's uh, another bitch wandering that way. That's fine. I'm in here now. Hello? Hello? I'm in here now. I'm sorry, I'll stop that. <laughs> That's probably about as enjoyable to listen to as it is for me to uh, make those noises. My my smoker's throat. Hmm, I don't need this in. Yes, we're gonna need this. We're gonna need this. I was just talking about that earlier. This seems like a nice place. Close these curtains up. Call this home for a night. Turn that TV on. We're gonna be having a good old time. Choco donut. Choco donut. Give me a boost of energy. Ah, pizza. Oh, donuts and pizza. Fuck, dude. We're still living the life. Still living the life. And then when I have to eat uh things that I farmed exclusively, I'll be like a little bit sad, but probably in a year or so I'll forget all about that shit. I'll be like, you know what? It's not so bad after all. Everything's gonna be fine. Alright. Close it up. Close it out. <laughs> I've been Brandon Dayton, friends. Your humble narrator. This has been Project Zomboid. Thank you so much for your viewership. I hope that you won't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. Even though we did do uh, quite a bit of backtracking today. I tried to include some creepypasta so it would be uh, at least halfway interesting and new and fun and enjoyable and other adjectives. <laughs> Anyways, I hope to see you in the next one. We are going to make our way back home within the next day or two. Uh, once I fill my bags up again, maybe I'll go back and get those guns. Who knows how it's going to go. Um, I'm not really good at planning, which is why it's surprising that I've made it in Project Zomboid this long. But we're going to keep it going until we can't know more. And I hope you'll join me for it. Anyways, friends, until the next time, bye-bye! One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friend.